Salute, folks. It's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor of Alonzo Hall, your social media insurance broker. And I'm here today to whap and tap on your head with another ADH Wealth rant. Today, I want to talk about the buy-term invest different strategy and the flaws with it. Before I go in, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth or to schedule an appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description of this video. So, again, you'll have a lot of people who are, you know, CFPs or primary term only agents and they're like well buy term invest the difference because you know your investment will or even people who aren't licensed don't buy no whole life insurance because term life insurance is cheaper and you can invest that money in something that's gaining you 10 percent while this is true you can invest that money into something else and it will be cheaper to buy a term life insurance policy uh, and invest the difference first of all the problem is most people don't Understand that investing is made to be done in lump sum. So you can't put $25, $50, $100 dollars away a month and think you're investing. I had a guy tell me, oh yeah, you can open a, a brokerage account with zero to thirty-five hundred dollars of fidelity. That's not investing. Okay, investing is ten thousand, twenty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars in one transaction. Not bits and pieces here, not fractions. Right? Because if you go to a stockbroker, they'll tell you you need to either purchase 100 shares or $10,000 as a first investment with the broker for them to earn your trust and gain your business. How do I know? Because years ago, I worked at a stockbroker firm called E.J. Sterling. Right? But the flaw with buy term investment difference or hey, invest in something that's going to get you 10% is that there's a few things. One, the fees involved with investing. Two, the taxes involved with investing. Three, it's not guaranteed. You see, there's no guarantee that it's going to gain you 10% year over year, especially when the average return on investment over a 20-year time horizon is 10%. You see, what happens is all these FOGs, fake online gurus, tell you nothing but about the wins. That's like saying, hey, come play basketball. Come play for the Chicago Bulls, because Jordan won six championships here. So when you come play for the Chicago Bulls, you're going to win. Remember, Jordan won six championships. Right. But what have the Chicago Bulls done since or prior? Right, and so that is a major issue is that it's not guaranteed and then you have all these taxes and things that you end up having to pay the other flaw with that strategy let's look at the most commonly sold term insurance policy it's a 20 year term and again there's nothing wrong with term insurance there's a need for every insurance product which is why they exist but what you're telling your, 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 your client is you plan on your investment guarantee to outpace everything and guaranteeing that over this 20 year time horizon it's going to outpace inflation. It's never going to have a dip in the stock market um, and it's always going to be put a positive return year over year, which doesn't happen. So then you're also telling them it's going to grow enough that it will be able to supplement your income, likely allow you to retire, live a comfortable lifestyle, and pass down wealth to the next generation tax-free, all of which is inaccurate because you can't pass down money tax-free at all unless it's proceeds from a life insurance policy. So... Those are some of the flaws. Also, in a 20-year term, you're telling them, I plan on dying in 19 years. Because if I die on year 20, 
I don't get anything from the term policy. Well, you don't get anything from the, the term policy. So, it's a flawed strategy. Right? And again, when you're talking about numbers, realize that there was a study done by Penn State University that showed 99% of term life insurance policies don't pay a death benefit. Generally because the client lapses the policy is what Penn State found. But I'm going to give you people more credit and say that you end up outliving the policy. The problem is, if you outlive the policy, you have to hope that your insurability is the same. Meaning that you have good health, and that you're even able to get another insurance policy. Anyway, that's going to be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth, or to schedule an appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description of this video. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, wipe ass. Work in progress every day and see success. Wipe ass. Work in progress every day and see success. Wipe ass. Work in progress every day and see success. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, remember, when people challenge you, they don't challenge you to challenge you. But they challenge you to challenge you. Accept the challenge. Salute.